I worked in the printing industry for about 45 years, and I went everywhere from production to estimating to sales. I retired in uh, 2012, and uh, since then, I spent time with my wife and, and our grandchildren. Back in November, it was found that I had a tumor on my uh, kidney. I was obviously very concerned when I first heard the diagnosis, and uh, it was through my family doctor. But as soon as I made contact with Dr. Barkin, he reacted very quickly, and uh, he uh, just jumped on it. The amount of pain that you're gonna have is much, much less. My name is Dr. Jack Barkin. Presently, I am a urologic and robotic surgeon in Humber River Hospital, and I have been very active at Humber River for the last 40 years. One of my passions, so to speak, outside of the hospital is woodworking, electrical work, plumbing, painting, all kinds of handyman type jobs around the house. And the classic story was many years ago when I was still a resident in surgery, I would come home from work at the end of the day and my wife would say, you have to make a house call tonight. And my question was always, am I supposed to be taking my medical bag or my tool bag? And part of my also passion throughout my whole life has been technology. I always love new things, new gadgets, new tools, and certainly from the operating standpoint and the urologic standpoint, always looking for the latest, most advanced techniques in the management of our patients. Robotic surgery is laparoscopic surgery on steroids. We can do with a robot things that you can't do laparoscopically, even though the approach is the same, and that we call it minimally invasive. Traditionally, in, with any surgery, there's a big cut. And a cut takes longer to heal, and it also causes tremendous amount of pain. You have to open the space even wider because the instruments that you are using are bigger, Whereas with minimally invasive surgery, the instruments themselves are much smaller. So each cut is more precise, each cut is smaller, and that provides better control, better visualization, and ultimately a quicker and easier recovery for the patients. I first met Jack, and uh, if I may call him Jack, in uh, 1987. We had a history of prostate uh, problems in our family, and so I've been going to see Jack once a year uh, ever since I had a CT scan and then I had a biopsy. And before he even discussed the biopsy with me, he saw the results and he had booked surgery for me. He's very thorough, but he's very casual, and it's like talking to your friend. When I was going into surgery and I was in the operating room, I found it very cold and I was starting to get very nervous. He walked over to me and he put his arm on my shoulder and I felt the heat from his hand. And he says, uh, it'll just be another minute and we'll put you to sleep. And it was so comforting, but it's something I'll probably never forget. It was very easy. I went to sleep, I woke up and it was done and uh, I was home the next day, which is hard to believe really. Dr. Barkin has been one of the physicians at Humber that has really understood the benefit and the, uh, the, the care of patients that comes from always staying in leading edge technology. Humber has a very long history of three predecessor hospitals that came together in 1999, and we had physicians from the three sites who for the first time had an opportunity to work together. Dr. Patak and Dr. Barkin were really being very helpful to the hospital as we were talking about putting our mark on the community. Dr. Patak had a family who were very, very grateful to him for care and donated a large sum of money to the hospital. It was the Hall family. And so we were able to buy our first robot. I'm most passionate about my family, to be honest with you, and that's the key. My family uh, is very near and dear to me. And many, many years ago, just as I was kind of getting into medicine, I had a relative who had a very unfortunate situation associated with big cancer surgery. That probably was one of the strongest motivators for me to look to other ways of approaching cancer within urology and any type of condition within surgery itself. That's why throughout my whole career, whenever there's been some type of new, innovative, less invasive technique that provided the same kind of results, 
and benefits to the patient, that's what I tried to pursue. Jack's had a tremendous impact, I think, through all facets of both the clinical, administrative, and just from a program building standpoint. Jack is someone who gets things done. You can rely on him to um, navigate things that you don't necessarily know how to do. No one ever takes you aside to teach you how to implement innovative steps and to have someone that's so adept at it is a real resource. With purchasing this new robot, the XI robot, we're getting a teaching console. So it's like a driver's training car in the sense that there are two sets of operating pedals and two consoles. And there are certain procedures now, cancer procedures that are going to be done in general surgery that they can't even do with the SI, but they will now be able to do these very significant cancer surgeries with the XI robot that we hope to purchase. The XI robot can take us to the next level. We have had the ability to roll out the SI unit to other disciplines in the hospital, including gynecology as well as general surgery. It's an interesting and very difficult concept for all of us to accept. In Canada, where healthcare is supposedly is free, that no robot in Canada is provided by the government. Donors are extremely important to our robotics program here at Humber River Hospital because without donors, we wouldn't even have a program. Donor support lets us innovate. They allow us to purchase robots that help our surgeons deliver surgery safer with better patient outcomes. Jack can drive change and he, he's done that through robotics and neurology and surgery, uh, various lasers, advanced uh, interventional imaging technology. Uh, and he does that all. And he can get people on board uh, to rally around him and as a group to get things done, not just on the surgical side, but on the donor side and the philanthropy side. Dr. Barkin is perfect recipient for this doctor of philanthropy.